There is a big game coming up this weekend, the Indigenous Heritage Night game. We are on Six Nations right now, and we are being joined by Cam Bombury, who happens to be a bit of a lacrosse legend around these parts. Oh, well, I would not say legend, but uh, <laughs> a lacrosse player and enthusiast for sure. Well, that's what people are telling me, and <sighs> we know that you love the history, we know that you know a lot about the history of the game, and what the meaning that it has towards the Indigenous people. Tell me a little bit about that. This kind of defines who we are, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, we live and breathe lacrosse here. It's a, a game that has, you know, a history like no other. Okay. You know, you don't see it in baseball or football or hockey. You know, we might have had a hand in inventing hockey, I think, you know, so. Mm. But uh, this game goes back thousands of years, you mm -hmm. know, since the beginning of time. And I know it's very ceremonial. I know there's a lot of that because I've seen it um, played before. And tell me a little bit about the practices that would happen kind of before the game and the practices that would kind of happen after game. Because I know that traditionally it's very friendly competition. And it was kind of a way to get out your, I don't know, air your dirty laundry, right? Uh, it's a way of, you know, resolving differences. Yeah. Too. That, that kind of had that intent a long time ago too. You know, and today it still kind of carries that spirituality of it all, you know, mm -hmm. making things better. It's a good medicine game. We call it a medicine game, you know. It really makes people that are involved in it, you know, stay kind of in tune with it because of the the medicinal purposes of it. It mm -hmm. makes you feel good, you know. As, as a player, it's getting your body ready for playing, getting your mind ready for playing, you know. So it kind of sets a tone for a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. And when people are, you know, their spectators, they feel that energy too, yeah. you know. So it's something that has carried on and that's what we kind of teach our young ones and that kind of raises them to be kind of that disciplined kind of strong person you know and yeah mind and spirit and yeah it's true you know it's it's all that wrapped together now is this kind of one of the traditional sticks because it looks very um oh, i don't know it looks very cool to me <laughs> this is this is the evolution of the game this is right here where we play this netted stick game right wow. so for the tradition to keep going, that's what is, you know, so spectacular about it is that, you know, yeah. through all the history that we've been through, you know, um, indigenous history, especially here mm -hmm. in Canada, you know, this is known as Canada's national game. and For a reason. There's, there's a big reason yeah. for it, you know. We've been here for um, millennia. Yeah. So it's, it's like this is a part of who we are and yeah. we carry that on to this day. Well, it's amazing. We're going to learn so much here today. Coming up, we're actually going to be checking in with one of the stick makers because that is exactly uh, where we are. And we're going to be checking in with one of the Toronto Rock players who's going to be playing in the game. Lots more coming up on Morning Live. Daniel Bo Henhock is a traditional wooden lacrosse stick maker here on Six Nations. And take us through the process of what it takes to make a stick. Well, to make a stick, the first hardest part, or the first part would be finding a good tree. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to do first is locate a good, strong, shag bark hickory tree. Okay. And on Six Nations, we have lots of different parts of land that still have forest on it. Amazing. Yep. So we like to get our wood from locally, mm -hmm. and people that clear clear cut their land, or somebody that has a good hickory tree, and they'll let us know. We'll go get it. Oh, that's and amazing. That's, that's the like the hardest part is finding an actual good tree. But it's nice that you've kept it within the community. You don't have to go yeah. anywhere to find yeah. the tree. Oh, it, it helps with us a lot too. And then the way that I like about it too is like we're taking a tree from the community, mm -hmm. making sticks, and giving sticks back to the community. Totally. And then take one tree and plant another. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Then what's next? Then we start. We got to bend it. Mm -hmm. Then we start shaving. So this is one that was bent a few months ago. Uh, it's hickory. It's nice and dry now. It had a pretty good bend. They don't always bend perfect, mm. but this was a good one. So then we just started to clean it up, start shaving away, taking a little bit of wood off at the time. Oh, wow. This is all done by hand. Yeah. Work. Woo! <laughs> How long does it take you to do a stick from like beginning to end? Uh, 
year and a half or so. Wow. There's lots of dry time. Yeah. You have to let the wood dry a lot. Right. So after you cut it, you gotta let it dry. After you bend it, you gotta let it dry. Yeah. And if you gotta, if it's not straight and you have to rebend it, you have to rebend it and then let it dry again. So all these sticks that are in here, they're all kind of in different process of yes. being finished, right? So you've got, you know, the ones back here that are just dry, but they haven't been shaved. And then you've got smoother ones over here. Mm -hmm. It's a really spectacular. Oh, I just had a really old stick in my hand. Where did it go? Oh, this one. <laughs> yes, they, they, they like to move around. This one's so cool. So tell us a little bit about this one that you know of. So that was uh, my great uncle's that was left behind for me. Uh, it's been in like in this shape ever since I got it. Wow. So it, it was all taped up. It was because it's quite skinny and he yeah, was a big it is. man. Like, especially up here. It's very thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he had all kinds of tape on it and it's just been hanging up for the last 25 years or so. So wow. I, I just recently put that guard back on it and I was going to yeah. get it strung back up. Oh, that's and so coach with incredible. It. I love that. Oh, and you coach yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So you play. I, I play, used to play quite a bit. But I got kind of lazy. <laughs> well, at least you're still involved, yeah, right? I, this you're is still... one way to stay yeah. involved. I, I love this part because I get to go to the arena and see young young boys playing lacrosse yeah. and then we get to see them playing with this and when they score or it's make amazing. a good check, it's quite yeah, nice Yeah, you're like, to that's see. my stick. Yeah, I made yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my head, I'm always like that. Yeah. That's I amazing. know where that stick came from. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. We'll continue to do your shaving, and uh, we've got so much more coming up on Morning Live. We're going to talk to a Toronto Rock player who's excited about the game happening this weekend between Toronto and Vancouver. For now, I'm going to send things back inside the studio. Brad Cree now joining me, who's a member of the Toronto Rock. You guys are playing the Vancouver Warriors this weekend. Uh, what do you think that matchup is going to be like? Yeah, well, we've had success uh, against them in the in the past, yeah. but uh, they're a little bit of a revamped team this year. Um, you know, they're new, newly coached this year, and okay. uh, you know, we know they ha they're going to be uh, ready to play against us. They're going to be ready for a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the Indigenous Heritage Night, it's a big night for you guys. Tell me a little bit about the game, the process, what happens at the beginning. I know you were part of the smudging tradition last year. Tell me about it. Yeah, so last year I was uh, fortunate enough to, to represent the, the smudging, but uh, we might have someone new this year, but uh, regardless, it's just uh, it's just a great uh, game for you know awareness of uh, the Indigenous community. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be stuff going on the concourse, um, educating uh, fans uh, about the Indigenous community. Mm -hmm. uh, I was fortunate enough to play for Six Nations this summer, so awesome. uh, I got to educate myself a little bit more about the game and the history. and. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, super knowledgeable and, uh, you know, I'm excited that uh, they're getting recognized in, in our league and our team. Now, are these the jerseys that you guys are going to be wearing this Saturday? They are. Super, super nice. Super nice. Yeah, they're pretty cool. So this is the Indigenous Heritage Night jersey. Uh, you were talking about the concourse. The Gord Downey uh, Fund is going to be there. So a lot of money going towards a good cause. Yep. And then at halftime, what happens at halftime? I think, feel like there's a little game or something, isn't there? Yeah, there might be. Uh, there might be a stick and ball game. Uh, I don't know too much about that, but. Uh, but regardless, it'll be fun for the fans. Yeah, we'll be in the locker room. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see it, but uh, <laughs> it'll be a good time. Now, what do you love most about playing the game? Uh, the physicality, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a few marks on his face. <laughs> um, just, uh, you know, they call it the medicine game for a reason, right? Just being able to come, you know, come together with your friends, you know, play the game that you love. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, there's some super, super rich history with this game. And it's important to educate yourself about it. Yeah, well, it sounds like the game is going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be pregame activities, of course, the smudging ceremony. Um, the strong water singers are going to be there either during the halftime or during a timeout. So it's going to be fun for the entire family. The game happening this weekend, the 24th Toronto Rock against the Vancouver Warriors. Wishing you guys the best of luck. Thank you very much. There's a lot more coming up on Morning Live. Don't go anywhere. Well, we thought we'd make it official and maybe play a little lacrosse while we're here on Six Nations. And Brad, what's the hardest part about the game? Uh, I guess catching and throwing, as I was just saying. <laughs> you know, I'm teaching you how to th uh, shoot the ball here. We should probably have Cam doing that as opposed to me. I'm more of a defender, but okay. uh, just getting a feel for the ball, right? You know, protecting it and, uh, you know, essentially scoring goals, what I would say would be the hardest part. How long have you been playing for? Uh, how, old I, how old am I? Uh, Probably about <laughs> like when you have to think about 20 it. Twenty years. Wow. Twenty years, yeah. Yeah, and competitively. 
Yeah, yeah, on and off, but uh, yeah, mostly once the, the hockey season ended, you would start to play lacrosse in the summer. So. Right, I guess. Oh, so not golf. That's good. That's, That's right. good. Um, okay, so the game is rich with tradition. It is rich with history. We've got the big Heritage Night game happening this weekend, the 24th. It's at 7 o'clock, and... I mean, there's so much going on within the game. It's not just a game. There's ceremonies at the beginning. There's education. There's uh, charity fundraisers. There's uh, tons of entertainment for the entire family. Uh, Vancouver Warriors. They're quite the team, I hear. They're going down, though. They're going down. <laughs> They're going down. <laughs> okay, Brad, let's teach me a little something-something. Okay, well, you got to figure out right now if you're a righty or a lefty. I'm probably going to be a righty. If you're a righty, so you'd want your left hand nope, on the ball. No, I'm a lefty. Okay. <laughs> right? So if you're going to catch the ball, we I'm call this catch it. the one position. Get your left stick or your left hand up as high, much as possible. Yep. It's just easier to track the ball. So okay. essentially, you just want to keep your eye on this ball here if you're going to catch a pass. And I uh, catch it like underneath or like I up here? I would say up here. You want to give him a target. Okay. Yep. And he's going to probably put it right in the target, let's hope. Oh, oh, oh. close. Okay. And then for the shot, you kind of what we call the two position. You want to kind of slide your hand down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get it to your, uh, just by your ear. And when you throw the ball, you're going to have your opposite foot take one step forward and okay. just go straight down to the net. Well, that's a How pass. How This is good. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm ready. Oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm horrible at lacrosse. One well, rule, two, no handballs in lacrosse. I'm, oh, no. How do you pick it up? You scoop it. Oh. Like you're shoveling dirt. <laughs> All right, so clearly not my sport, but thank you so much, everybody, for having us today. We've learned a lot, and good luck this weekend. The big you. game, the Heritage... <laughs> oh, sorry, Luke! <laughs> the Heritage <laughs> game happening this weekend in Hamilton. Oh, don't go anywhere. There's lots more coming up. Oh, that was a bad toss, sorry.